ladies of el salón the chronicles oye ladies of el salón the chronicles escucha ladies of el salón yeah so i wanted to shift the conversation a little bit because i feel like oftentimes we focus a lot on like male toxicity masculine toxicity whether it's at work walking down the street we actually have an episode before all of this started happening uh like within our community um we had an episode called don't cat call me and we all shared like our experiences with that and so we're all very familiar with um um to toxic masculinity but what does masculinity mean without the toxicity what is masculine like because honestly still to this day when i think masculine i think strong and i think yeah. you know take charge and i think Protector. you know yes and i you know like all of these things that are like gender roles you know gender role assignments and so what is that because we're all still evolving we're all still learning because i realize that we also kind of enforce that without knowing as a culture as women as dominican women you know we mm -hmm. raise our boys to be boys and you know yeah. so what does masculinity mean like can you break that down for us um i mean it's hard because it's relative right everyone kind of has a different definition of it and i think you know what i grew up knowing as masculinity is completely different from like what my friends may consider in this generation right being you know first generation dominican here you know i know that you know the older men in my family have a completely different viewpoint of masculinity than i would it's more centered in what you just mentioned which is which is strength um being non-emotional being a provider being there um maybe running around if you want to run around you know like a bunch of different things right whereas you know i think my generation you know kind of you know kind of adopts that but doesn't adopt it at the extreme that i think that generation did right so we we tend to be a little more um a little less um provider a little less like i'm going to take care of everything and you're just going to do this right we're more kind of and not everybody we're more kind of like i right, like what you bring into the table right um versus kind of like the past where it was just kind of like all right you're not going to bring anything to the table because i'm just going to control the situation right and i think a lot of that that whole male hierarchy was because of that um but I think, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm necessarily answering your question, but I think the interesting part, and, and I would specifically say just being Dominican, um, that I think is interesting just like in, in relationships, you know, with Dominican men and Dominican women, and I think Latinos in general, is that, you know, and, and this is not to like shift blame or anything like that, but, you know, we were talking about, you were just talking about how you, how you guys view it, right? And sometimes, um, you know, I, I think a lot of like what, what, what kind of disconnects Dominican men and Dominican women, at least Dominican men and Dominican women that were born here, is that um, a lot of them think they know what they want, but when they get it, they don't really want that, right? So it's like, you can root on for the guy who's like super open, super emotional, super honest, super vulnerable, all this other stuff. But like, when you date that guy, it's like, but he ain't this, 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 this. And then it kind of reverses at the same time, right. you know what I mean? Um, so I think, I think that's kind of where we have that disconnect in our community because um, where it was very clear, very, very clear. The one thing that we can give that past generation, whether we agree with it or not, is that there were clear lines. It was like, this is what it is. This is what I'm looking for. And both sides kind of knew what they were looking for, no matter what happened on the outside. I think with this generation, it's kind of like still trying to keep those ideals of the past one, uh, but also trying to like be like, I don't want like to have a relationship like my mom had or my grandma had. Like I want a more open relationship versus more of a top down relationship. So for me personally, I mean, I think it includes a lot of that stuff, right? It includes being like someone that's a protector. It includes someone being that someone that you know you feel you that you feel can provide right at the same time like you i don't think any man ever wants to be in a situation i i sure as hell know that you know being in situations before where i was flat broke with a girl and that shouldn't feel good because that should make me feel way less of a man and i think that's way rooted in the past and you know even if the girl at that point doesn't necessarily tell you like oh like it's it's cool you're just going through a rough patch as a guy you're like she ain't telling me the truth you know she think i'm like 
a loser or whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's it's super layered, mm -hmm. super super layered, you know. As yeah, so well, it can be very mm -hmm. emasculating. Yeah. Uh, because you're right, Claudio. To this day, you know, there's still some stigma if you're dating a woman who makes more money than you. Not necessarily because money doesn't necessarily equate to you know being more successful. So I just you know, if a woman's making more money than the man, it's still sort of like, hmm, I'm not, that's not okay. Whereas the other way around, it, it is okay. And the other thing is that I think that the lines are blurred in terms of masculinity, masculinity and toxicity um, in the sense that our fathers, our mothers, uh, our uncles are teaching our young men that to be masculine uh, you know, is not talking to a woman in a respectful manner, right? So you become a man the minute you have sex, or you become a man, you know, how many uncles didn't take, venga llevar muchacho para Santo Domingo para que, you know, you have your first sex, so that your first, you know, girl, because that's what makes you a man, mm -hmm. as opposed to all these other values that yeah. we're trying to teach our children today, at least I, as the mother of a boy, uh, a 14-year-old boy, uh, you know, try to teach him the value of being masculine and how that equates to being respectful in, in today's society and the things that are not acceptable in any shape, way, or form. And that's in relation to his sister because he has an older sister. So I, I am dropping that yeah. torch because I grew up in an environment where, you know, I did the dishes and the man sat in the living room and conversations were allowed to be mm -hmm. had in certain ways yeah. and I definitely and we're all mothers of boys and I think that we're all trying really hard to break that cycle um, but it becomes kind of difficult yeah. because like mm -hmm. you said it's rooted in our culture um, it's part of our, our, and it's, our and it's rooted, it's rooted in us too yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. exactly ladies of El Salon the chronicles oh yeah ladies of El Salon the